What is the Gospel? The Gospel is the greatest news that you will ever hear. The Gospel means good news, which in turn means that there is bad news. What is the bad news? The bad news is that we are sinners. If you look at the world today, you see people doing bad things. Bad people doing bad things, even good people doing bad things. And the bad things can be as small as a lie, all the way to a murder, or even something worse. This world is full of bad people, and sometimes if you ask a person why they did that bad thing, they themselves cannot tell you why they did what they did. But the Bible explains this. We once had a very close fellowship with God, but we disobeyed Him. We, all humans, have rejected God and we have followed sin by our own choice. How are all humans sinful, you say? How can you see children lying and doing bad things? Who taught them to do that? Sometimes they just do it on their own. This shows to us that we have a sin nature. And as a result, all of humankind is depraved. No person is born good. No person is good. And no person can ever attain goodness. Now God is a holy God. He created us pure. He created us with choice, but we made the choice to disobey Him. We made the choice to enter into sin, sin which is disobedience to God and His ways. And since God is a holy God, He cannot, by nature, tolerate sin. Therefore, we are separated from God. We as humans are responsible for this separation. To attain salvation, to attain reconciliation to God, we would have to work for it. We would have to try and do things right and try to be good people and try to do everything the way God wants it. But if we are being honest, there is no amount of work that can ever help us to become reconciled to God again. We cannot be perfect because we are imperfect. We therefore will die in sin and be eternally separated from God because as Romans 6.23 says, the wages of sin is death. Death is our final destination. All of us have fallen short. And as a result, every human being is condemned to die and be eternally separated from God. That is the bad news. But the good news is, God is a good God. He did not want us to die and be eternally separated from Him. God loves us. In 1 John 4 verse 7 onwards it states, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this the love of God was manifested towards us, that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. You see, God loves us, but He hates sin. For Him to remain a holy God, He cannot overlook sin because sin has to be paid with a price. So here is the good news. God has sent himself in the form of his son, Jesus Christ. Now Jesus, he lived a perfectly sinless life and he met the requirements to attain salvation, but sin still had to be paid. So he willingly chose to sacrifice himself on the cross. In Romans 5.8 it says that God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. 
Christ willingly chose to sacrifice himself on the cross to take all of our sin upon him and bear the penalty of sin for all mankind forever. He did this so that we don't have to bear the consequences of sin, which is death. He took it upon himself so that before God we are justified as we take Christ's place of righteousness. So Jesus died on the cross, he went into hell, and he was resurrected on the third day. His resurrection proved that he is God. He was raised to life for our justification before God the Father. As it says in Romans 4.25, Jesus was delivered up for our offenses, and he was raised for our justification. Through this work, of Christ, we can accept his gift of salvation, reconciling mankind back to God. And now that he sits on the right hand of the Father, we have full access with God through Jesus Christ. You see, numerous people witnessed his resurrection. As it says in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 3, I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. After that he was seen by over five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present, but some have fallen asleep. Jesus was raised to life to prove that he is who he said he is, and he did all of this in accordance to the scriptures. Through him, we now have access to God. We have access to his favor and his grace for all sins. In Christ Jesus, there is now therefore no condemnation, as it says in Romans 8 verse 1. We are now counted as friends and children of God. Eternal life is guaranteed, and we are fully justified before God. We no more have to work for our salvation. We don't have to pray five times a day. We don't have to sacrifice to idols. We don't have to do any kind of work to attain salvation. Now, it is just through believing. To believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that He is who He said He was, and we accept the gift of salvation, that He died on the cross, and that He rose again, and He is alive now and forevermore. This is why John 3.16 is such a powerful verse, because it shows us the gospel, that God loved the world, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. So what do we do in response to this good news? We must accept His gift of salvation. We must repent and turn away from any sins that we are willingly doing. There is no point in accepting Christ's gift of salvation and continuing in sin. Because if we do that, we are basically spitting in the face of Jesus Christ and the work that he did on the cross. He suffered on that cross. And if we continue walking in sin, we basically spit on what he has done. Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9 For by grace you have been saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. You see, we may not immediately be able to repent from our sins, but if we accept Christ's gift of salvation, we will never be at peace with sin. If we reject this gift of salvation, we commit the unforgivable sin of rejecting Christ. And ultimately, we choose to accept the bad news, that the wages of sin is death, and as a result, you will end up being eternally separated from God. This does not have to be your story. Jesus has made it possible for us to walk in fellowship with God without having to do any religious work, 
any ritual, any effort at all. He has done all the work for us. All we need to do is believe. In Romans 10 verses 9 to 10 it states that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your hearts that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth of confession is made unto salvation. All you need to do is believe. If you want to accept Jesus today, repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, thank you for speaking to my heart today. I now surrender my life to you. I believe that you are God the Son. I believe that you died on the cross for me, that you shed your blood for me, and I believe with all my heart that you have been raised from the dead. I now receive you as my Lord and as my Savior. Come into my heart, change my life for the better, and help me to live a life pleasing to you. Help me to turn away from sin and help me to walk in your statutes and in your ways for the rest of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, we would love to hear from you. Please feel free to leave a like or a comment, or you can send an email or message to us. We would love to hear from you. And if you have prayed this prayer and you're wondering what next to do, get into a good Bible-based church and keep God first place. He will take you to places that you have never dreamed of.